So the big question is this, how do most agents who struggle to get the information that most successful agents hoard to themselves grow and prosper without this information? That's the big question and this video cast is the answer. Welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. I'm your host, Pat Hyben. And now for the review of the day. All right, I got a review from Tamara Doris. Five stars, Pat's a master. Pat puts out one of the best real estate agent focused podcasts out there. He's smart, he's been there, and he doesn't sugarcoat anything. Highly recommend listening to him. Sharpen your saw and up your game. Thank you, Tamara, for the five-star review. Keep the comments coming, guys. I love them. And remember, I eat feedback for breakfast. So give me a one-star review if you want or a five-star review if you want. I don't care. And the more reviews we get, the better guests we get. So please, subscribe first and then leave us a review or wherever you're listening. All right, Rockstar Nation, I have a great returning guest, uh, one of my favorites and one of the audience's favorites uh, by downloads, pure organic downloads uh, without any advertising um, that we've had in the past. And she is back, Brittany Howard from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, back. She's half her size as what she was on last time on the show and, and i swear uh, i'm wearing clothes <laughs> <laughs> and she's uh and and a lot of changes have happened in, including her weight so we're gonna we're gonna dig deep uh into all the changes that she's made since she came on last and and what she's doing and how many guns she's still carrying on uh um uh, showings of vacant homes and all kinds of fun stuff so stay tuned Brittany. welcome back to real estate rock stars thank you so much i'm so excited to be here i'm like I don't know, thrills. So much has changed, including my hair color. It was like black the last time. Um, I'm just super excited to be here. Super honored. Super cool. Hey, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, Brittany, so they can get to know you better? Sure. Um, I have been an agent since March of 2015. My claim to fame, I suppose, and something that impresses everybody but me, is in, in 2016, I sold 52 units as an individual. Um, I did over $10 million that year. And after then, I kind of started a team, dissolved a team, restarted a team, dissolved a team. Um, it was a lot of give and take. And now I actually have a strong team. And I'm excited because I've uploaded my weekend training um, to the agent toolbox for everybody. So it's super exciting. Your, your week, what'd you call it? The weekend training? Yeah. I have a full two-day course. Uh, okay. So I restarted everything when I restarted my team. So now, um, whenever somebody's onboarded to my team, they have a full weekend um, of training broken down by the hours and everything that's supposed to go on. Got it. Got it. Well, that's, that's, a, great, well. that's a great gift, guys. And just so you know, since she brought it up, uh, I'm going to spell her name for you because she spells Brittany a little different. It's B-R-I-T-T-I-N-Y. B-R-I-T-T-I-N-Y. And Howard, uh, and the number two is going to be this because this is her second time. So it's hybendigital.com, Brittany Howard, and the number two. Or, you know, you could just go to hybendigital.com and, and you'll see her on there. Type in Brittany or BRI and it'll show up. Uh, her first two episodes will show up. But anyways, let's, let's get to some nitty gritty now. Like, where are you today? I know you've jumped around. I've been watching you. You, 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 know, you know, you had a, a – you had – you were working out of your house. You were with Keller Williams. Then you switched to EXP. Um, then you started building a team. Then you had um, some issues uh, at, at both companies with team structure. Now you're, now you have, uh, do you have your own company or, or are you at an independent company? What, no, I'm at an independent company. It, what, it's, I'm sorry, go ahead. What's the name of the company you're at now? It's Resolution Property Professionals. Okay, and so tell, out, me, Wendy. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about like, we're going to get into your numbers uh, and how many houses you sold and all that stuff, but just, 
just just to keep us up to date, like uh, all these changes that you made. Like, why did you make so many changes so many fa- so fast? And uh, then why did you end up at an independent after all that? So for me, I actually started at an independent and was fired from that independent. Um, so after then, I went to KW, then I went to EXP. Um, and so if, as team lead, I take personal responsibility for people's income um, to make sure that they have enough coming in to make whatever income they want and to make sure that their splits are fair. With that, I couldn't navigate or, or properly, I guess, negotiate splits that I would, I would actually work for. So if I was on a team, I would want to make this much per check. And I kept pushing back, pushing back, pushing back. And then I was like, you know what? This is not working. I want to talk to the head. I don't want to talk to this person who has to talk to this person who has to talk to that person. I want to go directly to the head because, of course, Heidi personality. I don't like the head. When you mean the head, the head of the company. Is that what you mean? Yeah, the head of the company. I want to talk to somebody who can say, okay, yes, we could do this. I don't want to step, step, step. Do you mean like when you're at Keller Williams, you want to talk to Gary Keller or? or No, like Stanford. Who are you talking about? No, I wish I could have talked. I love Gary. Okay? <laughs> like, like, if you could set that up, I'd be like, oh, shit. So um, what, what are you talking about then? So it felt like, okay, we have to ask the OP for this, or we have to ask this for this. And the OP would never get back to me, basically. It would just be kind of, no, without any... Um, well, the, bottom, the bottom line in this is that, um, you know, you found at whether the company was ABC or XYZ, didn't matter, the, the bigger corporate franchises, that they were inflexible with you regarding your team. You were paying out too much money per team, team members commission. And then when you wanted 50%, right, Mm -hmm. for your hard work, um, it was leaving the team member with basically nothing and they wouldn't work. They they couldn't work for peanuts. So so it was either going to be a matter of you working for peanuts or the team member working for peanuts because the broker had to take their split and once you take once again, once the broker takes their split and you do it 50 50, you found it difficult. So you bailed. Now you're at a company, I guess you're on a hundred percent split. Is that what now, you're doing now? No, she's at an we're at 80 20s with like 6,000 caps and um, for the team members, which were extremely important for me. Um, I hope that wasn't a secret. <laughs> so, well, and, care, but, uh, and we're at uh, 10K caps for me. Um, so, and we have full broker support. Like she's very hands-on, which is, I mean, we're both two high D personalities. So we butted heads a little bit, um, but she is also like completely supportive. We were having issues in April with deals not closing on time. I think it was like 10 or 12 deals that were locked in with one lender. I was um, infuriated by this as a high D personality. Can you imagine? Right. And my agents were just, you know, frantic and all this good stuff. And my broker stepped in and called the boss's boss's boss, and we got our deals closed. I've never had a broker step in like that. Got it. Got it. Okay, so so this is working out. So let's talk about your team and, and yeah. you. Like, so 52 houses your first year by yourself, no team. A couple years later, um, you got a team. How many houses are you guys selling now? Um, this year so far, we've closed 40. We have nine or 10 active. Sorry about that. I don't know that exact number. And we have 15 pending. I think we're at 65. Okay. Like, so, so you're going to do over a hundred this year, right? Oh yeah. And, yeah. and, and we uh, had 10 cancellations. So we're sick about that because our goal for the end of the second quarter was to beat last year's numbers completely. And we're like, just to define a cancellation. What's that mean? Bye bye. <laughs> like financing. You mean you mean a deal fell through? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, real estate agents and rock stars. If you're getting value out of the content in this episode, make yeah. sure you like the video and subscribe to this channel. Also, click the little bell icon to be notified about upcoming episodes. Yeah. And I would also love it if you left the comment and shared the most impactful tips and tactics you've learned from the knowledge shared in this episode, or even maybe make a suggestion requesting a topic of what you'd like to learn in future episodes. I welcome any feedback below. Now, back to the episode. Okay, 
So the house is back on the market. So are you getting more of those now than before or are you less? I mean, um, so a, strangely enough, I did not track that before. Like I didn't understand. And part of why I think I failed as a team lead is I only tracked my numbers. So Brittany has to be better than Brittany every year, right? Mm, yeah. That, that doesn't work well. For, you, you know what I mean? Like I didn't know cancellations. I didn't know my numbers properly. And this year, shout out to Kevin Markarian. Um, he actually helped me last year with this spreadsheet. So I made my spreadsheet. At first, it was all transactions. Yes. Now, it's, it's broken down to transactions, cancellations, pending contracts, active listings. And then I broke it down again by month so I know exactly what's going on and exactly how to project my income. Because at first, I just didn't know. I just write contracts, and then there's money that comes in. So. Right. Okay. So... Um so let's talk about money. Mm -hmm. um, so what was your ECI, your ego commission income uh, in the past 12 months, would you say? Um, ego commission. So that's without like. So uh, ECI, without yeah, yeah. Total commissions all added up. The gross. Is that including? Before, be, yeah, before the brokers paid everything. Like. So is that mine or including what the team did? Yeah, let's do the team. Let's do everything. Yeah. Um, okay. So this year the team's at about 180 in this six months, probably 250, 275. I don't know this number. 275. Yeah, okay. something like that. So what do you, what, what do you, what do you think you're, you're going to make? Like what's your profit going to be or is the last 12 months? Oh gosh. Okay. So probably for me, because I have bills, I'm trying to, a couple hundred, I think, something like that, which I'm not happy with because I make more individually. So I'm still playing with that number. So what, maybe, maybe that's telling you something, I mean, why, you know, like maybe you shouldn't do a team cause you're, maybe you should just go individual. Cause you know, I've be a lot done less. That, but I didn't sleep when I did that. Okay. And so now my lifestyle, like this year, um, we're on a huge recruiting push too. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll probably hit 250, 300 this year. Okay. Well, just be careful. You want to definitely, you want to definitely do a better job of tracking. I mean, that sounds like a disaster in the making because yeah. you know, people can, you know, you know, you could that, and that's why I call it ECI ego commission income. Cause right. you can make 275,000 be like, damn, I made a quarter million dollars. And then next right. you, know, you do your taxes and it's like, well, you know, you made a thousand dollars a month profit and, uh, right. And it's just not worth it. So, all right. You know, my so, profit margin is still pretty high. I know this because my expenses are pretty low. Um, but I think some of the issue is I just restarted this team in August, so I'm like, mm, well, it's blah blah blah. So, yeah, yeah, it, it takes some time. Um, all right, cool. So, um, all right, let's talk about guns. So, you know, last time you made a big splash because uh, you were pistol packing, and 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 I want to talk a little bit about that. So. Let, I, I want to role play again some scripts, if you don't mind, uh, sure. about uh, because, you know, you are – what's your – first of all, your average sale price is what? I want to give people a picture of the market that you're in. And We've actually um, – my average price, sales price has dropped a little bit. I pulled that yesterday. We're at about 140 average. Um, Baton Rouge – yeah, Baton Rouge's average is about 226. And you have a lot of empty houses? Do you have a lot of empty houses? We have a fair amount. I mean, we have a huge amount of new construction, mm -hmm. um, like everywhere that's popped up. We also have houses that are, um, we had another flood a couple, a couple weeks ago. And so some of those houses are vacant. And then you have sellers that move out of town and all this good stuff. So there's concern, you know, single female going out showing all these empty houses, right? So, so let's, uh, I want to role play a little bit. Um, and, uh, 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 you, you know, because a lot of people are concerned, you know, mm -hmm. as, as single females, uh, you know, super qualifying the buyers. So I, I think I, I make that persona of being a much larger person. Do you know what I mean? But I don't back down. I was almost robbed a couple of weeks ago. Didn't have my gun on me like an idiot and literally like stared the guy down. Like, I mean, I was ready to kick his ass and he backed off of me. So, yeah. Well, let's dumb this down then. Why didn't you have your gun? <sighs> right because i was just going to a regular like grooming appointment um and it was like oh okay it's 11 o'clock in the day i'm not going to a showing i'm not doing anything kind of um 
what I would consider risky, if that makes sense. I'm literally driving in my car to get to an appointment, park at the appointment, and a guy approaches my car mm -hmm. in the middle of the day, like it was 11 o'clock in the day. Mm -hmm. And so I did have, I had um, some Christians in the front seat for, for some reason. So I was thinking in my head, single white female, she, if she could kill a guy with a heel, I can too. Um, but I like those shoes. So all that was going through my mind. I had a hammer because, of course, we hammer down signs and I had a mallet. And inside, a Santa lock box. Oh, this, in, inside the car, though, right? No, he reached in. Oh, he, he tried to hijack you? I don't know what he was trying to do. He was reaching in, kind of touching and reaching across my steering wheel. And I was like, hey, look, it, like, I think you barked up the wrong tree. I don't know who you thought I was. So, when, so what you do? I basically stared at him and um, said words I won't say. And he kind of backed out. You just and, and I was just like. Screamed at him, right? So, no, I was just like this, like seriously. So, so tell everybody about your, like, like how you present the fact that, that you carry a gun when you're showing these empty houses in Baton Rouge. So it's mostly with, um, with males and we do have another safety aspect, um, that I don't know if we had. It's so funny because every woman on my team carries, um, Kenzie is the first one I can think of. She's a hunter. So she usually has rifles and bullets this long in the car. She's so, like, so how, how many women do you have on your team? Five. Five women and they all they all carry guns. Yeah, we all carry. You all carry guns. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, keep going. So usually it, it, it's not so much as a woman, but usually when I'm on the phone with a man, um, they'll say something, and if I get any kind of inkling or something like that, or or if they say things like, "Oh my gosh, you sound adorable. Oh, thank you so much. I am about to leave the range. I'm happy to show you this evening. Oh, you know the range. What are you doing at the range? Oh, well, I'm shooting. I'm practicing." Oh, that's awesome. Um, what kind of gun do you carry? Oh, I carry a 9mm Ruger. It has hollow points in it. The only time I've ever missed the chest shot is when I hit the crotch. And then they laugh, and I laugh, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> it is the truth. <laughs> hey, so you beef it up. You tell me it has hollow points in it? 9mm <laughs> hollow points, yeah. Well, what, uh, a hollow point is, is what? It's Pierce is a bulletproof vest. What's a hollow point? I, so the hollow point basically will go in and spread out like a regular bullet just shoots you. The hollow right. point shoots and then go. Good God. And so, and, and so you let them know, you, you okay. gotta let them know that if you hit them, they're going to die. Pretty much. Yeah. So, wow. And, and do you, do you ever have the guys just like, don't show up after that? No. Nope, they show up, but... No, know. they show up, and then they say, oh, you know, I want to see about my wife, this gun. How do you feel about this one? And I'm like, yeah, I didn't like the kickback. I like the rumor because... Oh, then they start bullshitting with you about, about guns, right? <laughs> so, so it actually becomes a rapport builder, but, yeah. but nonetheless, you feel confident, right? I mean, like, you don't, you don't really pre... Like, a lot of agents will be like, no, I have them come to the office. I get all their information. I make sure... I mean, I let's be honest, right? If this is 6 p.m. and you're still meeting the client at the office, what is the difference? Nobody else is there but you. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. True. So, I, I mean, I, I respect and I understand that, yeah. but I can't get my mind around what's the difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. And, and uh, um, that's fascinating. Okay. So, let's talk about... Uh, a little bit about where you're getting your leads from, sure. where the where the money's at nowadays. Uh, talk to me about what's working, what's not, Brittany. So for me, Commissions Inc. has always been strong. Um, we've had Commissions Inc. now for four years. Always strong, always will be. I think the ROI on that one, gosh, we closed on this month. Last time I checked, I was in 2033 for the ROI. Okay. Um, the Then we got back into Zillow. I have a love-hate relationship with Zillow. I'm not sure how I feel about them anymore. Um, I don't like what they're doing with the concierge. It kind of destroyed the system that I built with automation and all this good stuff. So I don't really like that. Um, but we're closing them. So, I mean, if it's making money, it's there for now. But if I could figure out how to get out of that, like if anybody has any pointers on how to get away from Zillow, let me know. Um, because you're addicted. And now I actually stopped for a year. And when I stopped, my production went down. Of course it did. Mm -hmm. but, they, but, but, you know, the key is, it, did your, what, you know, it's all about net. You know, I mean, you could get, it went I down. mean, I get that. that you, 
you can sell 500 houses a year if you yeah. just spend more money on Zillow. We all know that. Right. Question is, are you going to profit? Right. I mean, right now, Zillow for us is profitable. Um, when I pulled out of Zillow, it was because their reps were calling my team members, telling them they should be on their own and get their own Zillow profile. Well, let's talk about that. What's wrong with that? Well, pretty sure my agents are, you're on my team because I will feed you. You don't have to hunt. I have, oh. or I guess you have to hunt in the calls and making calls, but the food is right there. We have deer in the field. Go shoot them. Mm -hmm. And there I am with my gun analogies. Well, that's great. I mean, that's interesting. Yeah. And, and I see, see like, like, like literally there's teams um, out there that, you know, have thousands and thousands of Zillow reviews mm -hmm. and they're all, of course, their agents. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's interesting because the lines are becoming blurred as to like what, because a, a, a team is a company and a company is a team nowadays. So mm -hmm. um, the, the, the lines are being blurred as to what is a company and what is a team? Like, right. I hope I'm, I'm probably not making any sense, but what I'm saying is, you know, if you've got 2000 Zillow reviews, that, that's a company. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, you got that. There's a lot of agents funneling into that, right. um, but it shows up as being one single agent. It's always been like that. Nothing's changed, but it's interesting. So, so did your agents, do your agents have any kickback with that? Do they have any problem with that? They like, no, they love it. I don't want, want my own reviews. No. Well, the reviews and things like that, they get their own reviews. You know, when it comes up, even though you can see. Yeah, but it shows under Brittany Howard. No. Only if they log in under me. So you can see the reviews, but if they leave, and I've had agents that have left, their reviews go with them, even though it shows in mine too, if that makes sense. So it's so, like so Zillow, so what exactly was Zillow trying to sell them then? Um, sell them their own kind of lead generation zip code. Oh, they tried it again a couple of weeks ago. It did not end well for them. <laughs> so. End well for Zillow. Mm -hmm. So you yeah, I mean, they, they backed down because I basically said, I'm going on every internet. I was like, I'm the moderator of several groups. Do you want me to go ahead and let 110,000 people know this happened? What the? So, okay. So talk to me about, yeah. the, talk to me about these groups. Why do you moderate them and um, what are they? So I moderate Lab Code Agents and um, Club Wealth Real Estate Agent Mastermind. Both amazing groups. I do Lab Code Agents because most of my a lot of my growth came from Tristan and Nick taking just a little old girl who didn't know anything and sold 19 houses, um, taking her under their wing and helping me. So it's a huge mission of mine to continue to help the real estate community because sometimes when agents get to the top of the top, I mean, I'm definitely not there, but when they get to the thousand transactions and all this good stuff, they forget like, can you, you know, I have a question like, did you always sell this many or how'd you get there? or they want you to start paying for things and all this good stuff. Lab Code Agents feels like a huge, almost Lab Code Agent University, right? If you have a question about a CRM, type it in the search bar, you can find that. Um, scripting, type that in. What are the best webinars and podcasts? Type that in, you come up too. So it's just, I don't know, I just use it as a university. I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. And, and, and as a moderator, mm -hmm. do you get paid for that? Do you just yeah. do it? You just do it for the benefit, right? We just, we just do it for the benefit and to kind of help the real estate community. Help the community. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so um, here's the, here's the tricky part. I talked to a lot of agents about this and some of them end up getting overwhelmed, meaning some of them mm -hmm. I find that the agents are, you know, in these groups and doing these things you know, it, what amounts to hours a day. And when, and, it, and then it amounts to like a whole day's worth of work in a week, right? Mm -hmm. Two hours a day times five is 10 hours. Mm -hmm. And the uh, next thing you know, you know, other agents will say, well, shit, if I didn't, if I, if I don't do that, I could probably sell another house a week just because mm -hmm. I would be prospecting for 10 hours. So talk mm -hmm. to me about that. How do you make sure you don't get, you know, uh, consumed with, um, well, just right. consumed with social media and consumed with these groups. Well, there are like maybe, I don't know, 50 or 60 moderators. <laughs> so it's not just like, so you it's know, not like a job, right? No, no. We, and usually if I'm 
moderating, I'll moderate later at night or super early in the morning where it's not prospecting time anyway. And, and I kind of do it that way. Um, I have not had any pushback. As a matter of fact, I kind of probably gained a little clout when it comes to referrals because I'm like, hey, I'm a moderator of this group and I'm in Baton Rouge. I love to help you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Well, that's a huge thing, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. you get referrals from these groups? Yes, I do. I've just picked up my second one um, since becoming a moderator. So. so they just see your face in there all the time and they know you're from Baton Rouge and then they'll be like, oh, you know. Who yeah, you know, if they say, hey, I'm looking for a Baton Rouge agent and then you have all of these people, oh, you know, call Brittany, call Brittany, call oh, Brittany. Oh, no, Brittany, yeah. Right, right, right. And, and so it's a little bit cheerleading, maybe, but I've also taken referrals from the other people or taught the other people things and they're like, look, she knows her stuff, so. That's awesome. And, and um, how'd you lose 95 pounds, Brittany? So I had the gastric sleeve. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, you had weight loss surgery. And I'm like, yeah, I needed it. I was not losing weight. Um, so the gastric sleeve, what, April of 2017, I had a slight regain um, of maybe 11, 12 pounds. And since then, I've started intermittent fasting, which I love. I've lost like 9.5 pounds since like Tuesday of last week. So what do you what do you all eat every other day or what are you doing? No, so kind of, okay. If you can't tell my personality, I go all in or I don't go at all. <laughs> right. So I did a sixty eight hour fast. Um, it, it probably I, I ate a slim gym and a couple of nuts, so I'm sure I kind of <laughs> you blew it. You blew it. Sixty eight yeah. hours. What? Yes, yeah, so it was like, like three days. Maybe I wasn't fasting for like an hour and a half. Out of try seven. Were you going? For, you were going for seventy two, right? Three days, and then you. I don't know. I was going for sixty, and in my head, like one of my friends does it, and she was like, "Oh, you know, do a sixty hour fast because I wanted to lose ten pounds by my birthday, which was yesterday." What do you think about the word toolbox? What is a toolbox? A toolbox is a box full of tools that you use to build something great. At Real Estate Rockstars, we've created our own free toolbox. So everybody that comes on the show as a guest brings a tool with them and we plow them all into this toolbox and we give it away for our viewing audience to basically use as they wish. Everything we put in there is an actionable item that can be downloaded, can be printed, can be used immediately. And we got things like scripts and dialogues, checklists for teams, checklists to keep agents accountable, referral forms that are filled out at settlement to get referrals by your buyers and sellers. Everything you could think of that you could use on a regular basis about real estate is included in this toolbox. And it's helping agents worldwide sell more houses and make their jobs a lot easier and processes much more efficient. And the thing is, it's absolutely free. All you got to do is go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999. That's toolbox 444-999. Do it now. Hey, real estate agents and rock stars. If you're getting value out of the content in this episode, make yeah. sure you like the video and subscribe to this channel. Also, click the little bell icon to be notified about upcoming episodes. Yeah. And I would also love it if you left a comment and shared the most impactful tips and tactics you've learned from the knowledge shared in this episode, or even maybe make a suggestion requesting a topic of what you'd like to learn in future episodes. I welcome any feedback below. Now, back to the episode. Happy birthday. And I was, thank you. And I was like, okay, 60 hours. Well, in my head, because I work, <laughs> this is going to sound so stupid, but this is true, Brittany. I work 12 hour shifts, right, when I work in real estate. So for me, 60 hours was five days because 12 times five is 60. That's how many hours I work a week. And by the time I was like, huh, I wonder, I was like, I think I'm getting a little hungry. Like, is this normal? And I messaged her and I was like, hey, I've been fasting since Monday night. She was like, what? Brittany, you should have stopped this morning. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, 60 hours is a, is a week for me. It's five days. So That's crazy. That's crazy. Well, well, good. Well, whatever works, yeah. right? And uh, so, uh, I mean, you look and great. Like, I don't want anybody who's listening to this who struggled with weight like I did to kind of 
go crazy on this intermittent fasting. I also follow keto when I eat. Um, my calories are low and I drink a lot of water, probably a hundred ounces or plus. hundred ounces of water. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, um, and, and I, I would have to imagine that hun uh, 100 is a number that's stuck in your mind, right? Like you want to be able to say, I lost a hundred pounds. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's a normal BMI, right? Like right now, even though I'm a size four six, I'm considered obese, right? And and that I think is a mind thing, and it messes with you because it's like, dude, I put it. I'm still fat, damn. So so I'm looking for the normal BMI, eight pounds, normal BMI. Normal BMI. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't understand that, but whatever. Congratulations. <laughs> you know. Um, uh, okay. Cool. So, um, all right. So where do you think, uh, the market is going? What are you seeing in Baton Rouge that that's, that's different now than it was a year ago? Mm -hmm. Um, it, you know, seller's market, buyer's market. And, and what are you doing to combat that? We've shifted. Tell me. Um, we, it started, so we had a huge flood that basically took out almost 67% of the place where I do most of my business. So let me and slow this down. So when you say you had a huge flood, basically it just rained for a couple of days. And next thing you know, you look outside and there's puddles of water, uh, you know, or just rivers, rivers in yeah. front of people's houses and stuff. And then, Correct. then a week later you look out again and there's all kinds of rolled up carpet out in front for the Correct. trash man to pick up. Is mm -hmm. that, and, and how often does this happen? So this was evidently it happened in 83, um, but it wasn't as bad because now the area I live in is more saturated with people, of course. So when the flood happened, it was, I mean, I personally flooded too. I think at the time out of the top hundred, maybe three of us flooded, it wasn't very many of us real estate agents who were producing a lot that flooded. Um, but it was... <laughs> probably the worst experience of my life. And I went through a depression that I didn't know I was in until I got out of it after it. So, yeah. And, and so, so what happens with this? I mean, you have, you have houses, they're getting ready to go to settlement. They, you know, next thing you know, they're full of water. You have houses, I was the market. I mean, you have to take off the market because the carpets are full mm -hmm. of water. Like, well, and, and you're saying carpets like six inches. Some of these people got four, four feet, six feet, eight feet in their houses. I mean, did it interrupt your market? Did like nothing sell yeah. for a month after that? No, no, things still sold. It was almost, so we also, um, because of the disaster, that was called a 4-3-H, if I'm remembering correctly. It's basically where anybody who was affected by the flood could get 100% financing if they had a 580 credit score. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Five, five, first of all, 580 is low. Right. Right, uh, real low. And then... Um, you shouldn't be given a hundred percent finance to a five eighty, but that's a whole nother that's a whole nother discussion. So you got a five eighty, you you get a hundred percent financing because why? Just you're just because you're buying a house in the flood zone, or no? It was because you got flooded as a tenant, or you you had a house and it flooded, or something like that. So okay, so so I rent, I rent a house from a landlord, mm -hmm. it gets flooded. Mm -hmm. The government says, or what, what is this, the Baton Rouge municipality or somebody? No, says, this is government. Federal government, whatever, mm -hmm. comes out with a program. You got a 580 credit score and your furniture got flooded. And mm -hmm. so I'm going to give you 100% finance on any house you want to buy. No, I mean, you still had DTI and all this good stuff. It wasn't like what you're thinking. So it wasn't, oh, it's a free-for-all. It was, okay, you still have to hit DTI requirements and things like that. Yeah, yeah, debt to income. Mm -hmm. Right, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did it, did, and that helped? Did that help? Yeah. So yeah. Just, that all of a sudden you had literally a flood mm -hmm. of buyers then okay. saying, hey, you know, I, I was flooded, so I get this opportunity because otherwise mm – -hmm. They have I mean, to put down a they down give payment. you here, right, three and a half percent. So yes, it was an influx of buyers. Basically, if you had a listing, you would have a buyer. Like I'm talking hours on the market. So everything, Period. everything dried up. Like like all the listing inventory was like. <laughs> correct, correct, and and it was okay. You couldn't get listings fast enough, and then they sell, and it would be amazing. And you're like, oh my gosh, I have a listing. That means I have a paycheck, and you know, 30, 45 days. Well. Now, I have 4 million in listing inventory. 
I ain't got no paycheck. So okay. now it's all changed. Now, now yeah. the tides have turned. This program's not available anymore. Okay. All the buyers have been used up right? because they, because you probably could, uh, how did you, I mean, did you really even have to prove that you were flooded? I mean, or did you? Yeah, you did. How? Yes. Um, so with FEMA, whenever people flooded, you call FEMA out and they gave you a little bit of money. So you'd have to give what you gave to FEMA. Um, Pretty much, I think that was one of the requirements. Maybe pictures and stuff like that. A lot of people took pictures. But was it pretty easy to be like, hey, I was in a flood, even though maybe... No, they, because it, it was so many. It was like, if you think about how many people, it was un, over 150,000, right? And they, they were just trying to find places for these people to live, right? And then, and Correct. They, then they had right. to wait to get the loans approved and live in... in the beginnings of mold and everything else while they're waiting for the loans approved. So they were probably pushing it to get these houses settled quick. Correct. I mean, and, and they still like the program was government wide and every lender had availability to it or accessibility, I guess. Oh, and really? So, so you didn't have yeah. to go to a certain bank. You, no, everybody no. had access to this money. Mm -hmm. They probably and gave a certain amount of money, right? They probably gave like, you know, you know, $50 million or whatever. And they say, Hey, you know, when it's gone, I, I don't it's know. gone. Yeah. I, did, I wasn't privy of that to that because I just bought my house three months earlier. Finished my kitchen renovation two days before I flooded. And what happened? I flooded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just got water all over the floor or? or? Um, I got about six inches. And so in the streets, it was about four feet. I'm two foot above base flood. We had things in our garage. We got two and a half feet in the garage, which means everything in the garage has to, you know, it's gone. Um, we left, I think the next, the day we flooded, we left with the National Guard evacuation because I had at the time a three-year-old and like the kids were either 14 or 15, my big kids. Um, so we left, but we couldn't get back for a week. If you can't get back, you have to go all the way up. So. Jeez. You know, the yeah. things people don't think about, right? The things you don't think about in your markets, guys that are happening in other markets are very, uh, very interesting. Well, I'm glad you made it through that and uh, you're back on track. Yes. Um, and, and this is awesome. Well, this has been fun, Brittany. I'm glad you came back. So much has changed. Uh, always great to watch you. And guys, if you're not on, you know, any of these groups where she's a moderator, you know, um, Lab Code Agents is awesome. Um, and Club Wealth is the other one. Uh, awesome too. You know, all, all kinds of free information. Jump on them on Facebook. I'm going to put all of Brittany's uh, information uh, and so you could reach out there, send her a referral in Baton Rouge if you ever need an agent out there. And I'm going to put all of her information. I'm going to put everything she mentioned on there. I'm going to put her free gift there. It's going to be hybendigital.com. And Brittany is spelled different, guys. It's B R I double T. I N Y B R I double -T, T I N Y Howard and the number two. And of course I'm going to put, and I'm going to get you to what, say it real quick. Say exactly what it is again. It's the, it's the weekend boot camp, basically. Right? Yeah. It's basically a new agent two day training. What I found was I could say things and it didn't work right. So I created a training manual. Shout out to Mike Novak. Um, if he's listening he actually had one and I just basically sort of copied his and made it work for me. So shout out Mike. Um, but it's an hour by hour thing and it has like different links that are motivation, different um, forms that I hand out. I give them a binder and we go page by page, kind of like when you're onboarding for a job, you onboard that way. I, I, there was a book I read. Um, I can't think of it now, but it was talking about Starbucks in this book. So you may know the book where they, Talk. Sorry, is a book? Is a Starbucks book? Because I did read the Starbucks. Uh, no, it it was the one um, where it's talking about mindset and stuff like that, and they were talking about the Starbucks training and how to how to overcome objections and when people are mean, how to stay nice and all this good stuff. So I was reading that at the same time that I saw his training and kind of incorporated everything in there. Got it. Okay, so that'll all be there, guys. Go in there and get it. It's uh, hybendigital.com, Brittany. Howard to, and of course it'll be on the agent success toolbox where I'm going to put Brittany's information. I mean, Brittany's free gift. I'm going to put, uh, and I already put uh, all the other free gifts from all the other 
agents that have been on the show. That's at hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999. Brittany, I'm never going to forget this. Five badass women all carrying guns with hollow point bullets in them walking around. And one guy. We have one guy. Showing <laughs> houses. Yeah. You need to give yourself a special name, you know, the hollow points or something. <laughs> the hollow point team. Well, I mean, it's safety. Oh, before we, before we end, I'm sorry, I forgot one thing. Yeah, there's, go ahead. There's an app called Life360. Um, this app allows you to kind of track movements. We also do a red folder, yellow folder, green folder system. So if, if there was ever an occasion where, hey, I feel unsafe, I'm picking up the phone. Hey, can you get that? yellow folder off my desk. Okay, we all know what that means. That means, okay, she's scared, something's wrong. Okay, we got your location. Okay, I'll call you right back. You call right back. If they say, hey, it was the green folder, it's all good. Um, no, it was the red folder. Okay, we're in danger and we're calling everybody out there and we know your location. And, and the Life 360, is, mm -hmm. is it just like find my friends on your iPhone? Is that what it is? No, it's like a free app that you download and then it kind of shows everybody's location. It's a little bit brotherish. But for our careers, you know, if something did happen, we need to know where we are. So yeah, I think, well, the iPhone does that. That's free. It's uh, called Find, uh, Find My Friends or whatever. So. I mean, some of them don't have iPhones. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. If you don't right. have an iPhone, yeah, you want to get that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that makes sense. I like that system, right? Get me the yellow folder means disaster, you know. Get right. over, over there. That's awesome. Right. That's awesome, yeah. And we go over that in the training as well. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. that's cool. Okay, perfect. Of course, like, look it. We're sending you out with these internet. You need, you need this stuff. I bought. I bought this uh, thing on the back of my phone. It's uh, called a katana. Uh, actually, I read about it, and in Inman, a lot of agents have it at open houses. Katana. It, you you pull the plug, and it does an alarm. Or you could hold down a button for three seconds, and it, and then they call you, and it sends your location to five mm. people. That's um, cool too. Yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of good stuff. So yeah, can never be too safe, yeah. guys. And 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 Brittany's got it figured out. So you know, be conscious of safety. There's agents getting, you know, killed and and robbed and right. you know taken advantage of. Uh, every year we have horror stories of this. So uh, always good to be safety conscious. Brittany, thanks so much for coming back on. Uh, if I'm ever in Baton Rouge, I will definitely look you up. We get together and break some bread. I was going to say, I'm going to get you some food. <laughs> yeah, some food. Some, uh, if you're on the keto, we won't be breaking bread. We'll be breaking some fish or something. Yeah, we'll be breaking like crawfish. <laughs> there we go. Let's do it. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Rockstar Nation, thank you for listening to Real Estate Rockstars. Listen, I need a favor. If you find this free content helpful, if you find our downloadable items from each guest helpful, please, I need you to pull out your pointing finger. Yes, the one finger that points at people and hit subscribe. Yes, subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the better we look in the ratings and the easier it is to get guests like Robert Kiyosaki, Barbara Corcoran, all the players that are on million dollar listing in the different cities. All that stuff makes it easier the more subscribers we get. So please subscribe. And listen, there's a lot of places you can leave comments. There's a lot of places you can like. We're on Facebook. We have an Instagram page. Instagram page is I am Pat Hyben. The Facebook is Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Feel free to leave us comments there. The most popular form of commenting seems to happen on YouTube. Yes, for whatever reason, it's a, a very open environment. So just go to YouTube and go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Leave us comments there. Some of them we will read on the show. We love your feedback. So thanks, guys, and I hope you are having a great day. Oh, and also, listen, if you're going to subscribe and you haven't already left a review on iTunes, please do that too. Have a great day and thanks so much, Rockstar Nation. I really appreciate you.